Uh, well, we begin in a moment when we find our royal family in a moment of crisis. Um, the family, and it, it, you know, it, it's basically brother against brother, with one brother starting to lead an insurrection, against, which threatens to disrupt not just the family, but their entire civilization. So that's what jumps us off. How challenging and exciting is it with this whole IMAX thing, the idea that it's going to be a computers, uh, before it comes on to the is that the impact the development of the show? Absolutely, because it's never been done before. Typically with a TV show, you're forced to sort of think small. How, how can we do this? How can we afford it? How can we get it onto this little screen? Especially nowadays when so many people are watching TV on their iPhones and, and stuff like that. Um, so you've got to sort of step back and think as big as you possibly can because you want the scope, the, that big scope from the page so that the director, the actors, the art director, everyone can then sort of step out from there and, and uh, everybody think in terms of use. And I think if it had been done, I mean, even when we were watching the IMAX uh, viewing last night, you know, like you said, TV is so much smaller, and if it's something that, that translates well typically on television, if all of a sudden you put it onto this big IMAX screen, it can sometimes maybe make it look a little silly, or, or you know, the production quality, or just things don't translate as well, it doesn't have as big of an impact, the drama's not, you know, when something's confined to this space, maybe the drama's, you know, you know it doesn't have to be that uh, visually that, that, that big and everything. Doing it for IMAX, what I was so impressed with last night is that, you know, the, just the scope of everything from the visuals, um, you know, to, to sound and the scoring, everything feels as, as big as it should be, considering that it's on an IMAX screen. I'm a little curious about the development of uh, Ellen's character. You know, we found out yesterday that she's playing movies using an original human character, uh, and where the impetus uh, for that came from, and also where the impetus of making her an original character, uh, as opposed to some established came from. And for you, Ellen, what's like sort of play in this world where, yes, everyone does have superpowers, uh, you know, except for your character. <laughs> and, how much, and how much easier it is that you don't have to spend an hour getting into green makeup every day. That is the bright side. That's true. And I get to be in comfortable clothes. So there are some pros. <laughs> but, I mean, Scott, do you want to first talk about yeah, I, mean, I mean, the origins of Ellen just came out because we sort of needed a, a, a view into this world because all of our characters are, they're not humans, they're inhumans who, who live on the moon. So we wanted one character who would share the same point of view as the audience, which is this is kind of crazy. So you know we needed to if you just immediately accept that these are human and people with superpowers, it, 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 it starts to feel a little unreal. So we need to have someone register just how kind of crazy this all is. Yeah, and for me getting to play this character and an original character, you know, it was really great. I felt like um, both everyone, all the writers, and and because it was an original character, I really got to play with the role and have fun with it um, and bring you know myself to some degree to it. Um, take a character that was you know written the way she is. And she's she's works for an aerospace company. is very smart and is very driven and is a little socially. Um, she thinks, or she speaks before she thinks sometimes, and she doesn't really have a filter. Uh, but to take that and then also get to, to add and layer on top of it and have fun with it and, and bring, hopefully, some depth and, and, and layers to the character was really, was really fun. It was, I, I had a really good time doing it. It's not all the time that you get to play. Um, sometimes when, as an actor, when you're playing a role, and you feel like, I don't know how I'm going to make this work, or I don't know how I'm going to you know, make these lines work, I don't talk this way. And it just it felt very natural. It felt uh, just like a, a really natural fit. A lot of fun. It doesn't mean I don't want superpowers. <laughs> I mean, I think I could go through pterogenesis. <laughs> he's done. I'm not going to quit. <laughs> uh, but and also to, to be able to, uh, like Scott said, to, to sort of ground it because they are superheroes and they have these powers and it's such a, a, a fantastical thing in, some, in, in a lot of ways. And to make sure a lot of times I was on the same show because they are superheroes and I'm a human and, and to make sure that like you know we're on the same we're on the same world. And it is like a family drama. 
I mean, I think because it's, it's about relationships, and that's you're not just watching solely for the visuals. I mean, the visuals are there. We shot in Hawaii. It's beautiful, but also, you know, the content of it and the family dynamics. And you know, you've got there's no like good and bad. It's like kind of sort of everyone has you know good and bad in them, and, and just the, the family dynamics that anyone can relate to, whether it's between brothers or siblings or uh, you know all sorts of things. So I think that sort of is really what people also will want to stay yeah, in tune in for.